Uh, I really like the Netflix TV series Arcane. I've wanted to make a video about it since it was released. Uh, I think it's really, really good and comes frustratingly close to being actually great, a modern 21st century classic. Uh, but the reasons I've so far struggled to talk about it are really linked to ADHD. So I have realized that I can't script anything. I can't research it. I have to just go. And I'll get to the reasons why in a second. For those who haven't seen it, Arcane is a steampunk uh, adult animation. Not that sort of adult animation. It takes place across two cities, an upper city and a lower city. Upper city is posh and steampunky and technology and rich, and the under city is poor and has a lot of steampunk technology and a lot of crime because they're being oppressed by the upper city. Like, as a metaphor for the first world oppressing and exploiting the developing world, it's not exactly subtle. But is, considering how many people haven't got that fucking message, I suppose we'll just have to live with it. It follows a bunch of different characters, and the whole thing leads to this climactic fucking spoilers, I suppose, a uh, climactic conflict between these two worlds and multiple viewpoints, and it's a world in shades of grey where no one is right and no one is wrong, kind of. Uh, um, and it's really good. It's got a load of really interesting characters, even out-and-out -out villains who use magical mutations and weapons of mass destruction to and terrorism to get what they want, aren't exactly wrong. It's complicated. And it's really, 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 really good. The, the animation style, the first scene involves this father figure carrying two kids, orphans of war, across a battlefield. And the, you see what the kids are seeing. They're seeing all these corpses and how this looks, how they're interpreting it to these young minds. It's really good. It has, to my mind, three very precise problems. And I would love to talk about those in detail because I think they're really interesting. I think we can learn a lot from them. And the ways Arcane succeeds and the ways Arcane fails are really corely linked, that's not a word, linked to why video game adaptations to scripted media like films and TV don't really work a lot of the time. Almost all of the time. Uh, so, right. But I can't talk about it properly. So, that is linked to why I have ADHD, so let's talk about the wall. There is this concept with ADHD. The reason people with ADHD really struggle to do certain things is because they have a wall in their heads. It, pick any action. Climbing the stairs. Let's say climbing the stairs. No, that's a terrible action because climbing the stairs is something you do to get anything done. Doing the laundry, right? Doing the laundry is a really simple activity. And so it should be just a case of get up, do the laundry. But for someone with ADHD, it, it's more than that. It feels like there's this barrier in between you and starting the task. And you know it should be really simple, but for whatever reason, brain, no. And so there is this phenomenon in ADHD called climbing the wall. You climb the wall by sitting there, and gathering energy and working out the individual steps and going, okay, to do the laundry, all I need to do is get up off this sofa. I don't need to do anything else. If I, if I just get up off this sofa, then I don't need to do the laundry maybe, but I could if I wanted. And then you get up off the sofa and that's called climbing the wall. But there's another thing called staring at the wall, which is just thinking about how doing the laundry is really simple and you should be able to just do the laundry. Why can't you do the laundry? What's wrong with you? You can crash through it or break through it with willpower, but willpower is a really finite resource. When I was working in an office, I uh, found that my brain was shutting down. It just wasn't working. And I could push through. I could do the work. I could, do, I could take the bits of paper and put the bits of paper in the place they were supposed to be, but I could only do that using willpower. 
And the thing is, because willpower is finite, I was using all of it up on picking up the bits of paper and putting them where they were supposed to be. But willpower drains away if you don't replenish it properly. And so I could only do that for a certain amount of time before my brain just started shutting down, depression kicked in, and I started going into a really dark place. So what has that got to do with Arcane? I have these three things to talk about with Arcane. And they are three problems that I believe Arcane has. I will run through them super quick, but I won't get into any detail for the reasons we're about to get to. Problem number one with Arcane. It is entirely too reliant on coincidence. This isn't a problem for most of the show. So throughout the show, spoilers, uh, in episode three, uh, the cop who arrests Vi just happens to be there at the precise time and the precise place in order to stop Vi from apologising to Powder or running and getting Powder away from antagonist WMD man, whose name I can't remember, the one-eyed guy. Uh, meh, fine. Um, but there are others such as, oh god, um, when uh, Powder sets off a flare on the roof uh, and uh, Vi and Cupcake get to her and they start having a conversation, Fireflies turn up just as the conversation is getting to a point where the sisters might get to work something out. And the ha Fireflies just managed to get that, and you, that's explainable. Like, Powder set off a big old fucking flare on the roof. It's understandable that Fireflies would come along and look. It's fine. And then, at the end of the show, the, the like, penultimate episode of my last episode, like, Powder just happens to be standing behind a statue where one-eyed antagonist dude is conveniently, like, talking out loud about how he's <laughs> wondering whether or not he's going to betray Powder. And then Vi's in this climactic fight <laughs> with some dude, I can't remember. And then Powder just happens to get to the pub after the fight has ended, and she happens to know where this is, don't ask why, and yeah, fine. And then Cupcake's in her house, what should be one of the most fucking secure locations in all of whatever the upper city's called. And Powder just happens to be able to know where the house is, get into the house, get Cupcake with no one seeing her or stopping her, and get her down to the fi final episode showdown, whatever. <sighs> And then, at the end, Powder gets her big old fucking rocket and she fires it at the council chamber because the show wanted this big, oh, but the council were just going to do the thing they should have done all the time and now they're going to get destroyed because of, of Powder. It's like, oh, how tragic. And there's multiple things you can read into that, but like, how did Powder know where the council chamber was? And how and there's a lot of logistical things such as how can you fire an RPG over that it doesn't matter the thing is any one of these coincidences can be explained away N none of them really matter it's like when uh, talking about Bruce Wayne in The Dark Knight Rises how did he get from a pit to Gotham with no money or whatever by itself it doesn't matter but for me and Arcane the coincidences started to mount up and mount up and mount up and they got to the point where the ones previously like the cop grabbing by and like the fireflies showing up they went from perfectly fine and perfectly explainable to the show's just relying on fucking coincidences for most of its plot moves plenty of its major plot moves and suddenly I've gone from really loving the show to going, you're just making this up and pushing these characters around like pieces on a chessboard in order to get them where you think they need to go, aren't you? In my opinion, it's that kind of killed the show for me. The second, but, but, ha, and we'll get to hmm, why I haven't been able to talk about that in a second. The second problem I had was powder. Arcane is a, word, a world where characters have complex motivations and there are shades of grey. There's no real right or wrong. Um, and they're talking about really complex political issues like political inertia. There's, there's this one character who has a lifespan of like 300 years. And so he's going, we just need to slow down. Change shouldn't go too fast. You know, that fucking 
piece of liberal doctrine, you can't change the world too fast. And everyone around him who doesn't live as long is going, dude, people are dying right now. We need to do something. We don't have time to wait for your, oh, well, in 50 years, things might have thought themselves out. We got time, dude. And in that world, they decided to introduce Harley Quinn. Now, I love Harley Quinn in her own stuff. Birds of Prey is one of my favorite comic book films. I love the Harley Quinn cartoon. But Harley Quinn is a cartoon. Even in her live action film, she's over the top, she's larger than life. She doesn't fit in a world where everything is shades of gray, no, one is, no one's really right, no one's really wrong, and you're examining deep political issues. You can do some of that stuff, but only in a world where everything is equally over the top. <laughs> like in the Harley Quinn cartoon, she gets a name, uh, a road named after her, and it's an enormous twisty turvy like freeway. <laughs> and it fits in with the world and it's talking it so you can do political messaging but harley quinn cannot exist in a world <laughs> where it's really grounded and everything's gritty and realistic and morally complex so i think jinx <laughs> uh the third problem i had was uh characters ultimates arcane is built uh, uh, come, the characters come from uh game league of legends and in League of Legends, you do things and <laughs> you uh, get build up power and then you unleash your character's ultimate ability. And there are multiple points in Arcane. I was watching it going, oh, that's that character's ultimate ability, is it? There was a point where Jace, uh, a scientist inventor chap, and Vi, a fucking street brawler, went down into the Undercity to punch some dudes. And fucking Jace was, I think his name is Jace, was keeping up was was fighting as like strongly as brilliantly as fucking vi and why how is he able to fight this well he he's never been in a fight is it in his life as far as we can tell but he had this big old bit of tech i was just going oh that's his ultimate is it it really just stretched credulity which considering my credulity was fraying at that point anyway wasn't great so that's the three things. The fourth thing, the fourth thing I had was character motivation, and it goes back to Powder, which uh, was like she tries to blow herself up to take care of the Firefly boss, and I was like, why though? And at the very, very end, when she kills Dad to save Vi, I was like, I don't understand why she's doing that because Powder had PTSD was tr and was dealing with like ab uh, abuse and trauma and the whole powder jinx thing is like an expression of how powder was choosing to move forward after like having all this awful shit happen to her and as with the coincidences they, those two questions have real answers probably good answers but for me, I was having this problem where I was watching the show and going, I don't understand why she did either of those two things. Mm, fine. And it, it, it links into Powder and the, the, the one-eyed antagonist dude. Because like one antagonist, the one-eyed antagonist, but Powder's narrative is her surrogate dad, the one-eyed antagonist dude, is abusing her. And he did tell her Vi was dead, which is emotionally abusive. But otherwise, like, he, from what I could see, was actually a really good father to her. It was one of the things that made his character interesting, because he wasn't just a moustache-dwelling a villain. Blah. But, so, but if he is being a perfectly good father to Powder, he's being a good person to her in a way he's not for anyone else. Why is Powder like this? And I'm not an expert on trauma, but at the same time, I don't think just saying the word trauma, dropping a smoke bomb and running away is a sufficient explanation. It didn't ring true for me. And because it didn't ring true for me, when I wanted to explore the idea further and think about it afterwards, I just, I felt like nothing was there. But that fourth point is a me thing. It's entirely possible that I'm just fucking wrong and everyone else got it and I didn't. Yeah, fine. So. Going back to this point of coincidence. Vi gets grabbed, 
fireflies show up. Jinx teleports about the fucking map. Uh, so, I have this idea, and the idea is Arcane relies on coincidence because it wanted to have this climactic showdown, this duel of fates between Vi and Powder. But they also didn't want to put in the legwork it would require to actually get them to that point. They only had six episodes to get this duel of fates in place. And so they just kind of fudged things a bit. To the point where I'm pretty sure if you watched the show and counted the number of words Powder and Vi said to each other as adults, it would be fewer than 20, I think. But this is the thing. The first thing you should do if you want to write a video essay, if you have this idea, a core idea for a video of Arcane relies too much on coincidence, you then go back and watch the show and see if you can support that idea using the text. You don't want to do what H Bomber Guy did with Sherlock is Garbage and Here's Why and just go, Arcane relies too much on coincidence. I will go through the show, picking out every coincidence, going, see? And making a load of, oh, it's so stupid. Like, and go, oh yeah, Arcane. Okay. Anyway, you don't want to do that because that is entirely dishonest and it's not interesting to pick out coincidences and go, look, bad. We don't learn anything. And it's not a nuanced idea. It doesn't, it doesn't, the idea that this is definitely the case doesn't live in the same world we do. The world is messy and complex. And I think a lot of political issues we have currently come from uh, vested interests trying to portray the world as simpler than it is. So, I have this idea, Arcane relies on too much on coincidence. The first thing I should do is watch Arcane again and see if that holds up. And I can't. Ever since I've watched Arcane, I've wanted to do this. I watched it, oh god, maybe a year ago. And it should be easy to re-watch Arcane. It's watching a TV show, that's easy. You sit down, you press the button, you watch the thing. Arcane is not a long show, it's nine episodes. I can't remember how long the episodes are. I think they're half an hour, but like, a worst case scenario, they're an hour. That's nine hours. This is, I think I've played nine hours of Hearthstone Battlegrounds over the last week. I don't particularly want to, but it's something to pass the time. But this comes back to the idea of the wall. There is a block in my head when it comes to watching Arcane. My brain just goes, nah. And I'm like, can, can, we, can we do this now? We've got this thing that I actually want to do. I really want to make this video. I want to talk about this stuff. I think it's really interesting. My brain just goes, no. Can we, can we watch Arcane? Can we sit down and can we just open up Netflix? No. And so if you can't do the research, if you can't go back and check whether this idea that Arcane relies too much on coincidence, if you can't check that that holds water, you can't do the video. It's unbelievably dishonest to rely on at this point, year old memories of a TV show. I wasn't medicated when I was watching the TV show. I might have missed things. I might have entirely got the wrong end of a stick, especially about Powder's motivation. Like, and moments between Powder and one eyed antagonist surrogate dad. There could be a load of stuff there I missed the first time. And the fact that I missed it isn't a problem. Shows should include a lot of stuff that, little hints that things aren't quite right and some viewers will pick up on them and some won't. But the hope is that even viewers that don't pick up on these hints that things aren't quite right, their subconscious will. This is the thing about Daenerys Targaryen in Game of Thrones, spoilers, I guess. Like, the fact that she went mm, and uh, burned down King's Landing, I didn't watch that episode because I have already checked out by that point, but for me, it seemed pretty, pretty in keeping with her character arc, that idea that she would just go, fuck it, burn it all because mm -hmm, she'd been doing a lot of that stuff anyway. She was just now doing it to characters people cared about. And so that left me kind of stuck because I want to make this video about Arcane, but my brain's going, no. And so that led me to me wandering back from Glasgow Central yesterday, going, just thinking about these gears grinding together in my head. This wall that I just couldn't climb. And thinking, 
the only way to talk about this is to put ADHD front and center and talk about how it feels ridiculous. Talking about it out loud and even thinking about it, it's like, are you seriously telling me you cannot watch a TV show? I watch a lot of TV. I'm really looking forward to watching The Time Traveler's Wife, the new HBO show, because it's written by Stephen Moffat and I, I like Stephen Moffat's writing most of the time. I, <laughs> I doubt I'm actually going to like the show, but we'll see. And there's a new series of Dairy Girls. I'm really looking forward to watching that. We've just noped out of Resident Alien, the second series, because that got shit really quickly. I watch a lot of TV, but I can't watch this. Why can't I do it? That's the thing. You can know about the war that exists in, ADHD, in certain people with ADHD's heads. You can know about it, and you can understand that it happens, and sort of why it happens. But without a real grounding in how mental health works and things like that, to explain it to people, it's like trying to explain addiction to people who are fundamentally unempathetic. It's a bit, oh, are you telling me you can't stop smoking? It's simple, just don't go to the shops and buy cigarettes. Uh, you're, just, you're taking the cigarette, putting it in your lips and you're lighting it. You're, you're completely in control. There are certain facts about the way uh, people live, the neurotypical people, that is people that don't have mental health conditions. Neuro neurotypical people just don't get because the world is set up for them. They don't have these barriers. You don't have these barriers. And so for me and certain people like me, when I talk about this, it can feel like, it can feel like I'm in the matrix or it can feel like I'm in hell or it can feel like I'm this weird alternate reality where everyone has two left hands instead of one left and one right. It feels like I am experiencing this problem where I cannot watch a TV show and I have that thought I can't watch a TV show and it feels really ridiculous. It feels really wrong that I also live in this world where like that is my reality. I cannot watch Arcade. And so I'm stuck with this idea. And so that's why I wanted to talk about this today. Uh, I might not have ever done this, but people continue to watch my uh, Sherlock is Garbage and His Why versus ADHD video, which honestly is really surprising. And it's got a pretty good like-dislike ratio, to my surprise. Uh, a third of people dislike it, which considering how Sherlock is Garbage is his and his why is this piece of internet folklore at this point. It's like one of those real classic videos that people just love. Honestly, the fact that only a third of people who watched it disliked the video, that's, that's, that feels really nice actually. <laughs> Very few people have watched it all the way through. Uh, in the, the, there's a little watch time graph you get. I can tell when someone watches it all the way through because their watch time spikes. Uh, <laughs> but the exorcism worked. I don't have my brain spiking off whenever my thoughts go near Sherlock Holmes. They don't burrow into me and go, you gotta do a thing, you gotta do a thing. So that's great. So th this thing about Arcane is nowhere near as bad uh, that I've wanted to do. It's, it's not as bad as for Sherlock is Garvin and his Y video. But it would be nice to not have this question of arcane and whether or not I can make a video about it taking up space in my head because nothing's happening about it. It hasn't happened for a year. The block hasn't gone anywhere. So that's me. I'm po I need to apologize for how rambly this was and how loose and unstructured it was. But as I've said, it was this or it never gets done. And I would love to go into detail about the problems I raised with Arcane, because as I said, I think they're really interesting problems and none of them are insurmountable. Like if they didn't bug you when you watched Arcane, fucking great. I, I'm really happy because as I say, Arcane is a really good show and I don't like that those problems kind of spoiled it for me. 
Like, if they're doing a second series of Arcane, I don't know if I'm going to watch it. <laughs> because the fun, like, I have this real problem with the fundamental their, their approach to storytelling, telling, which was use coincidence to shove the characters about the board like game pieces to get them into a position we want that I don't think you've earned. There's a really amazing conversation to have there, and I wish I could have it, but this is as close as we're getting. Thanks for watching if you have been, and I hope to at some point have a video about the internet's complete lack of chill about Stephen Moffat. And uh, one of my good friends is one of these people who thinks that Stephen Moffat is just very bad. And I am working up to doing a video with them where I can have this com a conversation with someone I really respect. And the hope is that I will be able to understand this position a bit better. Which would be nice for me. And maybe it would lead to an interesting discussion. Anyway.